Recording in progress.
Okay. Okay, let's start. Okay. Seventy first regular session of the twentieth city council is now called to order. Invocation by Honorable Councilor Roger Abaday. Wala pa siya? Ah, mo pa yung Then followed by the singing of the Lupang Hinirang and singing of the Cagayan de Oro March. Please rise. Okay. Let us bow our heads and pause for a moment and seek the presence of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, the unworthy servant, do give you all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and partner us with your continuous help in all our works begun, continued, and ended. Heavenly Father, we stand before you today asking guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this session. Help us engage in a meaningful discussions Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Shall we pray the, uh, what Jesus uh, told us to pray? The Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us all our sins. As we forgive those who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Oh, my God. 
be seated. Good afternoon, the councillors. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, our guests are here today, our friends from media. No, roll call first. <laughs> I'm sorry, roll call first. Dinag libog po siya. Anyway, uh, Mr. Secretary, please do the roll call. Honorable City Vice Mayor Jocelyn B. Rodriguez, Presiding Officer. For the First District Councilors, Honorable Agapito Eriberto G. Swan, Honorable Roger G. Abaday, Honorable J.R. Pascual, Honorable Ivy Rose P. Moreno, Honorable Romeo V. Calizo, Honorable George S. Goking, Honorable Jose Pepe S. Abu Jr., Honorable Malvern A. Esparcia. For the Second District Councilors, Honorable Ibuna Yasin B. Imano, Honorable Maria Lourdes S. Gaani, Honorable Joylen Mercedes El Balaba, Honorable James K. Judith II, Honorable Ayan Mark Yunakaya, Honorable Edgar S. Cabanlas, Honorable Christian Rostico M. Achas, Honorable Josette G. Magtahas Daba. For the ex-officio members, Honorable Yan Lam S. Lim, Liga ng Mga Barangay President, and Honorable Kenneth Jan D. Sakala, CTSK Federation President. There is quorum, Madam Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. Quorum is zero certified. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, our friends from the media. Our visitors are here today, those who are watching us. Fellow uh, Kagayanos, maayong hapon. May hapon. Then uh, Monday is going, we will sponsor the flag ceremony Monday. And uh, we wish you that uh, we will be all around to support our presentation. We won last year, last December, the Tuna Festival. Again, it's going to be a challenging uh, participation this Monday. Hope you are there to witness and to support our staff who will join in the uh, presentation this coming uh, Monday flag ceremony. Thank you very much. Uh, Majority Floor Leader, Attorney Edgar Cabanlas, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Presiding. Our indefatigable Vice Mayor, Ibu Rodriguez, members of the City Council, uh, our friends and uh, guests at the gallery, people of Cagayan de Oro who are watching us in the respective social platforms. Uh, good afternoon. Salamat. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. May I move, Madam Chair, to dispense the reading of the minutes of the previous regular session of this Council on February 19, 2024, and considering the furnishing copies there of us, reading itself. Any second? Objection. I hear none. Motion is here by Karit. Move to approve the second final reading. Second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. On the special report section, uh, Madam Chair, there are two members of the City Council who are intending to deliver the special reports. First, Councillor Joylene Mercedes, uh, Mercedes Balaba, reprofessionalization of the early childhood care and development hiring. Councillor James Judith, regarding operation of, coloring, of colorum taxi cabs in the city, and only two. So may I request, Madam Chair, that Councillor Mercedes Gurley Balaba be recognized first. Councillor Gurley Balaba, you have the floor. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, our, pre our presiding officer, Vice Mayor Jocelyn Bebo Rodriguez. Good afternoon. My colleagues, employees of the Legislative Office, our guests physically with us today, and those watching us online through our social media platform. So I am here today to endorse and endorse an ordinance calling for the prof professionalization of our Early Childhood Care and Development, or ECCD, service providers, granting them benefits and privileges crafted by the Office of the City, Social Welfare and Development, so that I may be able to um, um, express clearly this proposal, Madam Chair, 
and so that most of our constituents listening to us right now would be able to fully understand the plight of our ECCD service providers or daycare teachers, I would like to speak, um, switch, yeah. switch in yeah, verna course. vernacular. So, una sa tanan, base sa research studies nga gihimo sa UNICEF, aduna kitay learning loss sa pipila na katuig sa ato mga kabatan unan, and this study was conducted even before the pandemic. When we say learning loss, Madam Chair, ang usaka 15-year-old nga bata is six years behind base sa iyang mental aptitude test results. So, ang 15 years old, a 15 year old, ang iyahang uh, natunan uh, base uh, mo ano lang sa mga rag nine year old na bata. So, dili kay siguro kayo sa kaning kulang sa uh, reading comprehension, no? Kining mga writing skills, etc., etc. Et so, even math. So, tungod di ini ang ato mga panggamhanan na ninguha nga makarecover aning learning poverty pinaagi sa mga programa nga mapaligon o mahatagan o dakong importansya ang ato mga ECCD. Kay base usab sa mga studies, children who enrolled in early in preschools have better production when they enter into regular schools. O nga nung atong mga bata, dili man ma-enroll sa ilang mga ginikanan sa mga daycare centers. Perhaps because they thought their children do not learn anything from daycare centers kay magdula-dula raman dito daw. Which is in fact false. Kay children at the age of 2, 3, 4, and 5 years learn through place. Mabitaw nga, gitawag po ang mga daycare centers o play schools. Kay dinhi, makabalo sila sa mga color, mga simple numbers, mga basic forms, mga circle, mga square, and more importantly, they know how to interact with other children, developing their social and emotional skills. Ikaduha, Madam Chair, kayang atong mga daycare teachers or ECCD teachers mismo, adunay kakulangon sa kahibalo o ang uban, dili mula hutay tungod sa walay igong sweldo, o ang uban, ilisan ni Kapitan, tungod kay wala misuporta sa iya sa eleksyon, dili ganahan ang kapitan sa iyang dagway or pulihan sa uh, silingan sa kapitan or sa pariente sa kapitan. In other words, walay siguridad ang pagtrabaho sa ato mga daycare teachers. And yet, these daycare teachers undergo trainings and seminars by our city government, no? shouldered by our city government, and the big share of their honorariums ang syudad ang gahatag. Sayang kung buot hunahunaon ang kwarta nga gigastos atong syudad alang sa pagkandak sa trainings sa atong mga daycare teachers only to be replaced and fired at the behest of the punong barangays anytime. So mo ka na atong buot nga likayan, Madam Chair. We can only ensure the quality education of our children if we also have quality educators. And this is what this ordinance is all about. If we must invest for the progress and development of our city, we must put importance on investing on the ed education of our children as they are the future leaders of our city. So it is my prayer, uh, Madam Chair, that this ordinance would be tackled um, with the Committee on um, Education and the Committee uh, on Social Services. And LIGA, and, uh, I hope. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, daycare. Barangay Affairs. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. That is a very good report. I, I also, I also uh, noticed that it happens after new uh, capitans is installed, then mahawa o sayang uban. Yes, Councillor Attorney uh, Joy Abu. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. May I just pose a question to the good reporter? Um, <clears throat> just for a clarification, um, if we want to institutionalize the sa akong nabalaan pa Madam Presiding Officer is kanang city development uh, centers sa kanang daycare uh, would it be <clears throat> this would these teachers CDT teachers be uh, 
hired under the local government unit of Cagayan de Oro or still with the barangays? That's just my question. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Attorney Joy Abu. Yes, uh, yes uh, Councillor Joylin Balaba. So the city mayor shall be the appointing authority of any CDT after possessing the qualifications and none of the disqualifications provided that the CDT or the uh, child development teacher has been totally endorsed, has been officially endorsed by the Punong Barangay. And the head or designated head of the city social welfare and development department after a favorable recommendation from the ECCD pre-screening team. So it is uh, the appointing power would be on the city mayor, but uh, endorsement would be coming from the Punong Barangays. Yeah, if I may, uh, this some of these daycares are already regular, uh, regular employees of City Hall, right? Those that can be removed, if I'm not mistaken, those that are, can be removed are those who are not yet regular. Is that is it the situation? Kaya ganon tang tangon man. With the men, bin the salary is taken from the city. And a portion also taken from the barangay, ugnay ikahatag ang barangay. So I am just asking whether some of these are already regular uh, daycare teachers, but the rest are not regular daycare teachers. So ang matangtang regular ato, katorang yung dili regular. Okay, yes, Councillor Suset Daba, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, hapon sa tanan. Anyway, Madam Chair, we still need to discuss this at the committee level. Okay. So we will have a joint committee meeting and we need to polish, pa, Madam Chair, ah, the okay. implementing rules and regulations because as much as possible, we don't want it politicized. If naagya po recommendation from the Kapitan or yeah. um, mahulog hapon na inana, no? But uh, anyway, Madam Chair, uh, for discussion pa man siya, but I'm also very supportive to the Good Reporters uh, special report, Madam Chair, para adini masayang ang mga trainings and adawat sa mga teachers because every year, no, uh, we make it a point to, you know, uplift and uh, improve also uh, the manner of teaching sa ato ang mga uh, child development uh, teachers. So uh, maybe if there's a technical working group that we can create for uh, the crafting of the ordinance para ma-finalize yeah. tanan, Madam Chair, we will do that at the committee level. Yeah, so. precisely why I'm asking whether these are regular and non-regular. The daycares, are they classified as... I'm just, I'm just asking because I'm curious. Regular and non-regular. Yes, Councillor Gurley Balaba? Yes, uh, sa, sa, in, the uh, in the ordinance, in the draft ordinance, um, Madam Chair, for professionalizing the ECCD service and sustainability of the ECCD program, there will be a creation no, with the appropriations of 200 plantilla positions of daycare worker 1 and daycare worker 2, of which 10 positions shall be created and appropriated in 2025 and continue thereafter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can we proceed now to the second uh, speaker? Any more questions, Solana? Okay. Yes, Councillor Ayan uh, Achas. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. May hapon to our Vice Mayor, Jocelyn Bibo Rodriguez, to the fellow councilmen, and to the people of Cagayan de Oro. Gamay lang akong pangutana, Madam Chair. No? Kung ang issue kabahin sa pagkaputbol sa mga daycare kung magpuli ang bagong administration. Pila nakabuk daycares nga nga putbol during sa pagbago nga mga kapitan. Kaya when I was ipunong barangay, natigulang na lang ang among daycare, wala magigit siya napulihan. Then, ang barangay, the counterpart sa gamay yeah. nga inorarium para sa iyang daycare. Then, the punong barangay will appoint the daycare teacher paingon sa city. And gusto na ako masabtan kung unsa yung me mechanism, kung maingon taong professionalism kabahin sa itong mga daycare teachers. Are they uh, covered? Kung dayon ni ang atong programa, covered ba sila sa civil service? They will be permanent in the government? Kaya sa ako nasabtan sa barangay, 
Pagsugod man sa mga dakers, voluntary ra ang pagtudlo din ha, Madam Chair. Ang uban, atuod man, wala nakagraduate, nakatungtong lang sa kolehiyo pero for over years, nagtudlo na sila sa daycare. Mawala ba sila kung it comes to professionalism? Kay kung itanaw na to, ang mechanics ani, basig unyag madeprive na hinuon. Katong mga daycare teacher nga way back 20 years ago, yeah. 30 years ago nga nagtudlo sa barangay, nga ang ilang gikuptan, maulamang ang training nga gihatag sa CSWD para mag-handle sa atong mga daycare teachers. Okay. That is Thank you very much. I'd like to add, wala giyilis. Once they are ready city paid, wala na. Ang ako ragyud nga nasa una because my, my daycare teachers has been there for so long. Pila na nga kapitan na nga gi. Di magi makamafootball. Because why? Plantilian, yeah, is there regular as uh, employed. Kato ra mga volunteers, kato. Mga siguro job orders, siguro, no? So anyway, that will be handled by the Committee on the Education, Social Services, and Liga, uh, Barangay Affairs. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next speaker, Councillor Attorney James Judith, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. Sa atong uh, halandong Presiding Officer, Vice Mayor Jocelyn Bebo Rodriguez, Majority Floor Leader, Councillor Adgar Cabanlas, akong tinahod ng mga kauban sa konseho, mga bisita, kagayanon, maupay. Madam Presiding Officer, ang Certificate of Public convenience o CPC kun prangkisa usa ka pagtugot nga gihatag sa atong gobyerno sa mga operator sa gitawag nato na kadaiyang mga sakyanang dipasayroan pwede bus pwede jeep pwede taxi mo nang kung gapadayon ka nag-operate nga wala gani kay prangkisa nga gihatag gikan sa LTPRB ang tawag sa imo usa ka kolorom kay wa man ka nasubay sa balaod wala man kay prangkisa Pero taliwala nga wala kay prangkisa, nagpadayon gyapon ka o operate o nabaneo sa imong taxi. Kabahin sa problema sa taxi din sa atong dakbayan. Base sa atong tala, Madam Presiding Officer, dili mo ubos og 200 ka mga kolorong nga mga taxi nga naglipana, nagdagandagan din sa kadalanan sa atong dakbayan. Ang problema ra ba dayon kay ang kapasanginlan ang uban nga mga sakyanan nga dipasayroan. Na kung but sumahon, ang problema po sa atong mga taxi operators and drivers, dili ang uban ng mga sakyanan, pamasayroan, kundi dili ila ragyapong kauban ng mga taxi operators o drivers kay kulorom o wala sila nasayon. Isa ka pamaagi o diskarte ng kulorom ng taxi, Madam Presiding Officer, kay isara ang body number or gitawag nila giklone. Isara atuod ang body number pero duha ka units ang ga-operate. Dili masayran sa tanan Kay dili man gadungan or makita sa katawan ang kining duha ka unit pero isara nagambit sila sa usara ka body number. Kay pwede man ang isa ka taxi to adidto sa kauswagan o ang lain to adidto sa barangay gusa. Ako dili makita kay dili man tuyuon man sa operator nga dili sila ipaguban o ipagdungan aron mahalata nga pareha day sila og body number. Lain pod nga pamagi na ay mag-operate O taxi nga walay markings, kundi katulang ang taxi nga sa ini si butang sa ibabaw kung feel bali sa operator or driver. Napoy taxi nga naa ang mga markings, pero walay body number. Pagtuo sa ilang mga kauban nga operator or driver, kolorom or legit bali nga taxi, pero kolorom di ay. Ato ning gidala nga problema dini sa wanan sa atong konseho kay sagad ni nga problema nga gipadangat ka nato sa atong mga taxi operators o drivers. Kay ang ilang reglamo gakatuok na kuno sila problema na kuno gakapektuhan sila sa ila baling panginabuhian. Pues ato kining gidala dini Madam Presiding Officer kay but nato nga masturyahan bali ang LTFRB nga ang mooy line agency sa atong pagagamhanan gitahasan gitagaan og mandato sa atong balaod nga mao'y magtanaw kabahin ani bali or mao'y magpatuman sa balaod bali sa kining franchising dinhi sa atong nasud mo na nga but nato kining gusto nga matuki uban ang LTFRB mo na madam chair at this juncture i would like to refer this matter to the committee on public utilities chaired by the good councillor general romi kaliso 
Maura ka to, Madam Presiding Officer, dagang salamat o asdang kagayan de oro. Okay, thank you very much. So, refer to the Committee on Public Utilities. Wala man si Councillor. Okay. So, let us proceed. Majority Floor Leader, Attorney Edgar Cabanlas. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. So, we proceed to our business of the day. Propose uh, um, omnibus motion one, two, uh, one, two, three. Turks, please. For omnibus approval, items one, two, three. Item one is proposed resolution number 2024-651, returning to the Barangay Council of Barangay number no. five, this city. It's ordinance number 2024-01-001, series of 2023, covering its annual budget for CY 2024 with an estimated income of 3,171,731 pesos. Item 2 is proposed resolution number 2024-652, returning to the Barangay Council of Barangay No. 9, this city, its ordinance number 001, series of 2024, covering its annual budget for CY 2024 with an estimated income of 3,702,096 pesos. Item 3 is proposed resolution number 2024-653, returning to the Barangay Council of Barangay No. 31, this city, its ordinance number 1, series of 2024, covering its annual budget for calendar year 2024 with an estimated income of 8,171,985 pesos with the information that said ordinances are operative in their entirety. May I request Councillor Yan Lam Lim be recognized, Madam Chair. Councillor Yan Lam Lim, you recognize? Wala siya? Lain na lang. Saka, uh, Councilor, Councilor Kenneth, Kenneth Sakala. Councilor Kenneth Sakala, you recognize? <laughs> May na lang yun, nag-CR. Ah, na, na, niabot na. Okay, Sige na, na lang. Okay na. Okay na, okay na. Okay na, <laughs> okay na proceed na. Okay. Good afternoon, Uh Move for the approval of the proposed resolution number 2024-651 and proposed resolution number 2024652 and the proposed resolution number 2024653. Second. 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 Second by Councillor Agasuan. Papagani Mohamad. Papagani Mohamad. Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Thank you. Move to approve and second final reading. Second. Ah, nagunay, nagukod sila. I think four. Second. Uh, objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Item 4, proposed resolution number 2024-654, expressing the collective support of the residents of Kagen Dioro for the Philippine government's efforts in protecting the West Philippine Sea. May I request Councillor uh, Bade? Councillor, uh, uh, majority, all yeah. members, this all is support yeah. to the President, Congress, Panlalawigan, Sangunian, Vice Mayor of the League. So, so all, all members. members. Uh, author is the vice mayor. Yeah. Uh, so all, all members, members also. Uh, all members. All members, yeah. principal authority. Unanimous. Members. Okay. So, uh, any second? Second. Any objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second final reading. Second. second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Number five, proposed resolution number 2024-655, approving and or adapting the Transportation Master Plan for 2022-2032 of the City Government of Cagayan de Oro. Uh, Councillor Caliso is not around. Uh, the second is uh, Councillor Ian Mark, Ian Mark Nakaya. Councillor yes, yes. Ian Mark Nakaya, you recognize? This has long been uh, awaited for, Madam Presiding Officer. And on behalf of the transportation sector and the entire constituency of uh, Cagayan de Oro, we move for the approval of this uh, okay. matter. Any second? Second. Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second final reading. Second. second. Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Number six, proposed resolution number 2024-656, accrediting the KM. Eight indigenous people develop, develop, development livelihood 
Association Inc. for the purpose of its membership in the local special bodies pursuant to DILG Circular Number 2022-083 and Article 64, Rule 13 of the Rules and Regulations Implementing the 1991 Local Government Code or funding in project of, of its projects from the city, city or other sources as required under the COA Circular pertinent thereto. May I request uh, Councillor Nakaya to be recognized. Councillor Ayan Maknakaya, recognize. Move for its approval. A second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is Rebecca. Point of, point of inquiry. Councillor Attorney James Judith, you have the floor. Ako lang ning tatawon kay sa pagkakaroon, taliwala nga natay balaod sa IPMR, mo connect ba ni siya sa paghatag nato pagrecognizar nato ani isip usa ka IP nga uh, development nga organization dili ba ni siya makonektar sa atong pag-accredit pagrecognizar sa IPMR nga problema pagyapon hantod garon? Okay, Councilor Ian Martikaya. Uh, it's not a concern because we have an IP representative here in the person of Councillor J. Roa Pascual. It has been a long uh, acknowledgement. Soon we are going to have one IP. Soon. In, in any case, uh, that's a different uh, process, Madam Presiding Officer. So our accreditation is just a process as regards the uh, the city govern uh, the local government codes uh, requirement for membership in the in the. Uh, uh, local special bodies. But on the other side, as, as uh, introduced as a query by Councillor James, uh, that's a different process. Okay. Any, any question? Second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is by carried. Move to approve on second final reading. Second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is by carried. Number seven, proposed ordinance number 2024-387, authorizing the Honorable City Mayor Orlando A. Uy, representing the city government of Cagayan de Oro, to enter into and sign the memorandum of agreement with the Land Bank of the Philippines, representing by its, represented by its president and CEO, Lineth Ortiz, and its branch head, AVP Ligaya Padelia, covering the use of a two two square meter area at the westbound terminal and public market located at Barangay Bulwa, the city, for establishment of one unit lobby type ATM under the terms and conditions stipulated therein. May I request Councillor George Gokin to recognize? Councillor uh, George Gokin, you are recognized. I find uh, everything in order, uh, Madam Chair. I move to approve the proposed ordinance number 2024-387. Second. Second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Uh, item 8, proposed ordinance number 2024. Second. 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 Move to approve the second final reading. Second. second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Number 8, Madam Chair, proposed ordinance number 2024 Thus. 388, authorizing the Honorable City Mayor, Orlando A. Oy, representing the city government, Cagayan de Oro, to enter into and sign the memorandum of agreement with the Land Bank of the Philippines, represented by its president and CEO, Lineth Ortiz, and its branch head, EBP Ligaya Padilla, covering the use of two square meter area at the city engineer's office compound, located in Barangay Coswagan, the city, for the establishment of one unit through the wall ETM booth under the terms and conditions stipulated therein. May I request Councillor uh, Balaba to be recognized. Councillor Gurley Balaba, you recognize? Um, I move for the approval of proposed ordinance number 2024-388. Second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is here carried. Move to approve on second final reading. Second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is by carried. Number nine. Proposed ordinance number 2024-389 granting one grade salary increase from SJ for eight for for bar eight to SJ five eight to Mr. Divino Soldevilla 
former Barangay Health Aid Office of the City Health Officer, the city who compulsorily retired from the government service last December 4, 2023, pursuant to Section 30 of Republic Act 7305, Magna Carta for Public Health Workers, and for this purpose, appropriating the sum of 3,423 pesos, 90 centavos, from the item from the item personal service salary savings of item of item number 84 NARS 2 for the period January 1 to 3 2024 in the 2024 annual budget of the said office to be made available for the payment of his three month salary differential for the period September 4 2023 to December 4 2023 may I request councillor Gani. Councillor Lourdes Gani, you recognize? Thank you. May hapun ka natong tanan. Request for the approval of proposed ordinance number 2024-389. Any second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is here by Karin. Move to approve on second final reading. Second. Objection? I hear none. Motion is here by Karit. Number 10, proposed ordinance number 2024-390, extending the deadline of the period for renewal of business licenses, permits, and the city public, public markets from February 29, 2024 to March 31, 2024. May I request Councillor uh, Yan Lam Lim? Councillor Yan Lam Lim, you recognize? Madam Chair, everything is in order. I move to purpose ordinance number to approve purpose ordinance number two zero two four dash three nine zero. Second, objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second final reading. Second, second. objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Item eleven, proposed ordinance number twenty twenty four three nine one, authorizing the Honorable City Mayor Orlando A. Oy. Representing the city government, Kage and Dioro, to enter into and sign the memorandum of understanding with Xavier University, University Ateneo de Kagayan, represented by its president, Father Mars P. Tan, his J, covering the implementation of information education and communication campaign on solid waste management, management through the city local environment and natural resources, Clenro, a societal engagement of XQ students under the terms and conditions is stipulated therein. May I request Councillor Kenneth Sakala be recognized. Councillor Kenneth Sakala, you are recognized. Move for the proposed ordinance number 2024-391. Second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is here by carried. Move to approve. Second. Final reading. Second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to include items 12 and 13. 13? 13 only, Madam Chair. 13. Okay. Any second? second. Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Now, item 12, proposed ordinance number 2024-392, granting exemption from payment of amusement tax to the, to the Kage and Euro Communication Coordinating Council, represented by its director, Miss Melody Sunugan, covering the concert tour of Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints through a live stream to be broadcasted to all SM cinemas nationwide on February 28, 2024. Uh, Councillor Yan Lam Lim, being the chairman of the Council. Councillor Yan Lam Lim, you are I move to approve purpose ordinance number 2024-392. And a second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is here by carried. Number 13, proposed ordinance number 2024-393, establishing and institutionalizing the poor rock system in the, in the delivery of development programs in every barangay of Kage and Oro City, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. I move for the approval of this ordinance, Madam Chair. Any second? Ob 
uh, clarification. A manifestation. Okay, manifestation. Councillor E. B. Imano. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. Good afternoon to all the members of the City Council. Good afternoon, our guests, media members of the City Council. Again, good afternoon. Madam Chair, I would just like to ask, I know uh, item 13, inclusion, is certified urgent by the local chief executive, but I just have a few manifestations as well as um, a few inquiries that may follow later on. Now, in the said proposed ordinance, which is to establish, is to institutionalize the Purok system in the delivery of development programs in every barangay of Cagayan de Oro City and appropriating funds thereof and for other purposes. Now, in the said proposed ordinance, which again aims to institutionalize Purok systems for developmental purposes, if I am correct, Madam Chair, and yes, I think it would be of help you know, to provide structure for our people in the Purok level, in the zone level, maybe our leaders in certain areas of our barangay. However, there may be, I have seen a few provisions that may have or may seem contradictory to the local code, local government codes. Now, in section 32 of the local government code, it said that city and municipal, municipal supervision over their respective barangays. Now, the city or municipality, through the city or municipal mayor concerned, shall exercise general supervision, supervision only, over component barangays to ensure that the said barangays act within the scope of their prescribed powers and functions. But if you have read in the attachment, in section 5 of the proposed ordinance, however, provides that it is the mayor who will appoint people who will be responsible in the organization, strengthening, expansion of Purok and the provision of... What, excuse me, what page? Let me check, Madam Chair. 100. 100. 100. Okay. In the section? Section 5, Madam Chair. City Purok Consultants. Thank you, Councillor Bernie. Proceed, proceed. Okay. <coughs> it said there, Madam Chair, that there shall be City Purok Consultants to be appointed by the City Mayor that will be responsible, again, in the organization strengthening expansion of Purok and supervision uh, and, to co and the conduct of election of Purok officers in coordination with barangay officials. Now, as per jurisprudence, Madam Chair provides that the power of supervision, mag supervise lang siya, is defined as the power of superior officer to see to it that the low, lower officers perform their functions in accordance to the law. That is what the executive can do. If I am not wrong. Now, this is distinguished from the power of control or the power of an officer to alter or modify or set aside what a subordinate officer had done in the performance of his duties and to substitute the judgment of the former for that of the latter. Now, by assigning persons in the barangay level as consultants, the city mayor will now, in effect, have the power of control over barangays rather than just the mere power of general supervision in which the LGC allows. Now, maybe, Madam Chair, another point is that in barangays and in barangay affairs, they are supposed to be non-partisan. Now, the city will create this smaller unit in each barangay because, as said, it is in Puruk or zone levels of the different barangays. They must also remain to be non-partisan, not, not appointed. They should be non-partisan. Now, the presence of and supervision of city appointed consultants in the Purok level will then make it a partisan activity rather than non-partisan na mao dapat ang naasa itong balaod which, which then goes against the law that we are, you know, fighting for. And maybe, Madam Chair, on the final note, the ordinance should be made to place na the authority should be to the head of barangay or to the punong barangay, not to the local chief executive or 
as in the ordinance has said, not to the city mayor. That's just my manifestation, Madam Chair. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Ibi Manu. Yes, Councillor Attorney Joey Abu. Nakulban si Sakala kayo. Author? <laughs> Thank you again, Madam Presiding Officer. Okay. Ayun, not look up. <laughs> Madam Presiding Officer, in, in addition to the manifestation of the good Councillor uh, uh, Manu, um, I have also several questions, legal questions as to the matter, factual and legal questions on the matter. First, Madam Presiding Officer, I understand that uh, this was certified urgent by the local chief executive. But uh, maybe know what is the urgency on the matter? And was this first referred and discussed in the committee level? Second, if you try to check Section 4 of the said proposed ordinance, if the barangay officials kung ang barangay officials ang in charge sa pagdivide sa tibuok barangay into puroks nga man nga ang consultant based sa section 5 sa proposed ordinance nga man nga ang consultant man ang naay gahom nga mo organize mo strengthen mo expand and mo supervise sa maong election sa mga purok Third question, in the election of Purok leaders, it was not even indicated who will be the participants. And how about those urban barangays na walay Purok? Kung saan man pagpurma sa Purok, gagmay kayo, example, na yung mga barangay nga abutante, mga 100 kapindra, like barangay dos. Ipurok e, e pa na mo. Commercial area naman eh. Also, if you try to se check section 6, it states here, a Purok certification that shall be issued by the Purok president na ma-elect. It will be a prerequisite in securing a balangay clearance. It should indicate in the, that the applicant is a registered and good member, in, good member in good standing of the Purok where he or she resides. Now, uh, I also have fears on this matter because um, um, sad as it may be, uh, this can be this can be used to politicize, and which is the thing that we want to avoid. Okay, what if kini porok presidente dili ganahan ani nga tao? Okay, dili nisa supportado sa di nisa tao ni kapitan or dili ni nila sakop. Dili may suwan o kay it is a prerequisite for him or her to get a barangay clearance. Dili sa isuwan sa porok leader or porok president porok president nila lo bali. And that, lastly, if you try to check Section 28 of the proposed ordinance, it states here, administrative sanctions. Barangay officials found remiss in the implementation of this ordinance shall be administratively liable. Question. Are members of the Liga ng mga barangay consulted about this already? Because, naaraba sa penal provision. And kung ipenalize sila for uh, if they found to be remiss on the performance and compliance of this ordinance, should it be passed, it would be uh, it would now seem that the local government unit of Cagayan de Oro or the city government has now direct control over barangays which supposedly under the local government code and the constitution itself nag-ingon that we, even the national government, as well as the, the city government, has only supervision over barangay, local government in the barangay levels. Perhaps, Madam Presiding, I think we would like to know the, the intention more of this uh, proposed ordinance. And I presume, since it is certified urgent by the local chief executive, um, May we move, Madam Presiding Officer, that this be referred first to the committee level for further discussion before we pass this before this plenary. Okay, Councillor, uh, thank you very much, Councillor Attorney uh, Joy Abu. Yes, Councillor, uh, Councillor 
Nachet, Nachet. <laughs> I'm supposed to call Councillor Yan Lamlim. Anyway, you're there already, Councillor Roger Abadai. Daga na lang ni Councillor Yan Lamlim. I, I, I have since your eyes that uh, ah. you're recognizing. Ito ay contact me, ha? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Presiding you. Officer, my okay. colleagues in this Puget uh, Council, and our friends who are watching us uh, today. Now, actually, uh, this ordinance is uh, is not uh, new, but it's already institutionalized in our country, the PORUK system. Now, the PORUK, uh, a PORUK is an informal uh, division no? within the barangay sa, sa atong asod. Uh, while it is not uh, officially considered as local government unit, but the PORUK is often served as a unit of delivering services and administrative within the barangay. Now, what is the importance of this system? Now, through the PORUK system, people are empowered. So, na naman tayong empowered na nato karoon ang mga kabaranggayan. So, uh, they are empowered to participate in community governance and to take pivotal role in the government program, especially, we have a problem now in our environmental uh, waste management, problema ta sa peace and order, o problema sa tanga na mismo pangitabo sa purok. Who will manage that? So, parang micro uh, management, no? Kaganing uh, system, no? Now, in fact, uh, ang kaning purok system sa Pilipinas, sa atong nasod, in 2011, uh, this system received the UN uh, Sasakawa Award and gained prominence among the practitioners of the uh, community. This was recognized internationally. So, I think this is the one of the most important that why we should have to pass uh, this ordinance. Thank you very much. Okay, Councillor Jan Lam Lim, now you have the floor. Madam Chair, I agree with uh, Councillor Abaday. Ang Puruk is not uh, really tanaw niyo politika o dili ni politika. Ang Puruk is, we have uh, naman tay uh, education campaign. No? Sa mga lugar, daghan kay complain sa mga basura. Kaysa mo itong, pwede mi i-approach na ito ang kapitan. Kung Puruk is na may listing kung kisa i-appoint, matawagan ni Mayor. Tungkol sa daghan lugar nga complain sa mga sa basura, sa mga sa peace and order, o mga program sa siyudad nga sila mag-inform sa dali-dali nga panahon within that area. No? Sometimes ang kapitan dili man gino maka-inform sa tanan area. So I think this is not a bad na uh, atong i-recommend ni Mayor as di tagaan nato siya pagpili. At least na siya outline kung kinsa yung tawagon, kung unsay mga information nga uh, madungga niya sa gawas nga ug, ang uban mag-report ug maayo pero actual day sa field dautan no so i agree with uh, uh, councilor abaday okay thank you very much councilor magtana nagpata sa kamot councilor thank you very much councilor yan lamlim councilor at uh, councilor ayan at chas you have the floor Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, ako lang, Madam Chair, no, as a former punong barangay. Uh, namang good sa ordinansa nga create that there will be an election of the Porok President. Remember, Madam Chair, that the powers of the government emanates from the people. When we say there is an election of the Porok President, are we saying that we are giving powers to the Porok Kagawad, a Porok President? When I was a punong barangay, never in my mind that the Purok president has the power to decide in behalf of the council because barangay government has a legislative functions, executive functions. Ang worry, that's why Purok president is not defined in the local code because our law is very careful that there will be usurpation of powers of the Purok president that will intervene the functions of the barangay. Now, it is guaranteed in our local code. It is the power of the executive and the barangay official 
to conduct a supervisory power to the purok. Wala may purok leader na na. Gani kung imong tan-aon, Madam, Madam Chair. It is just only a fiction. Dili siya applicable to all. How about the 1 to 40 barangay? Wala sila'y suna. Wala sila'y purok. Are they empowered? Now, here comes our local government of Cagayan de Oro. We are chanting. We are telling the people of Cagayan de Oro barangay empowerment. How can we define barangay empowerment to purok system? They are very contradicting, Madam Chair. That's why I believe this ordinance cannot be passed. Because there is a usurpation of authority between the punong barangay, barangay kagawan. Remember, Madam Chair, when the local government of Cagayan de Oro passed an ordinance, the ease of doing business, we defied the freedom of the punong barangay, their powers of supervisor, supervisory, not even to issue a barangay certificate. Nawala na na sa barangay. Now, kung kini atong itugot, ang atong mga barangay kapitan, mas gamhanan pa ang iyang purok leader kay gituan sa mayor. What happened to the peace and order in the barangay? It is against public order. It may be against a public custom. That's why this ordinance, Madam Chair, uh, dili appropriate. And gusto lang unta ko makadungog, no? sa atong Liga President, is he defending the rights, the duties, and obligations of the Ponong Barangay because he's very silent. The role of the ABC President is to take the interest of the Barangay. Then why here this ordinance is the interest of the Purok leader when in fact it is not defined by the local code that the Purok leader has a power because Purok is only a fiction in the barangay. It is not a legal entity to consider. Nga ato silang hatagan o gahom, ato silang i-elect, then this election will create powers to the Purok leader. Muna, Madam Chair, in my manifestations, I hope that masabtan sa uban ang among sentimento. Dahil salamat. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Ariana Chas. Yes, Councillor Yan Lam Lim would like to reply. You have the floor. You are talking about ease of doing business. Itagaan tag power sa mga kapitan. Ang mga dagkong, kap, dagkong area nga kapitan, kung dagko nga building, dugay-dugay yun, kay mangita, uh, pange, mga yung dagko nga bayad. Busa gani nga gihimo ni President Duterte sa ease of doing business because of the red tape. Kaning purok, dili man na ingon da utan. Kaling purok, dili may ngon nga mga kuwani. Ang atong siyudad maghatag o assistance to the purok leader. Aron ma matagaan o information si Mayor. Kaya daghan ma mag-complain asa area, nga basura, daghan asang area. Ang, at least this is a campaign for recycling, na tayo tao nga gisulduan. Kung wala'y suldo, di man na mutarbaho ang mga tao. Kaya sa may suldo, di lang nga naigo atong budget sa barangay ng mga barangay gamay, mga gagmay barangay. Assigning purok para tagaan silang information what is the development of the city to fast track the uh, uh, itabo nga gusto ni Mayor nga mga complain ma atiman. Muna na, muna na atong uh, matabangan sa mga dali nga panahon. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor uh, Yan Lamlim. Yes, Councillor Aimee Moreno, you're raising your hand. Yes, Madam Chair, dagang salamat o bayong hapon and sa kong mga kauban sa 20th City Council. Good afternoon and to our guests. Actually, Madam Chair, I would like to manifest no, no, that I agree with um, the good counselor, Councillor Evie Emano, when she mentioned about the Section 32 saying that the authority no, is being given to the mayor in getting the said Purok leaders And in addition to what she had discovered, sa Section 5 of the Ordinance, I also ha see here Section 29, which states the transitory provisions. Pending the election of Purok officials, the city mayor is hereby authorized to appoint the interim Purok president from the list of three nominees per Purok to be submitted by the Sangguni Barangay. 
Therefore, Madam Chair, as mentioned by our minority floor leader about the usurpation, na wala na local autonomy or gahum ang barangay na mulihok, murag na, na atong gihatag sa ato ang city mayor ang gahum no to 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 run the barangay. And also, Madam Chair, ako I honestly believe no da ko nga tabang ang pwede ihatag sa barangay. And I, I've always believed that the LGU cannot do it, cannot solve problems on its own. However, um, my next question would be, is the appropriation measures? Okay, my question is, was this included in the executive budget? And if so, okay, but if not, asa natukuhaon? Okay, dagan na appropriations na kinahanglan for this. So, but pasabot, kinahanglan po mag, mugawas o kwarta ang syudad. So, it's a matter of prioritizing. Yes, I do believe that barangays have so many concerns that need to be addressed. And kinahanglan po ng tabang gikan sa LGU ang mga barangay. However, what, will, what impact will this do to our budget? But pasabot, Nabay matangtang na budget. Okay, if you remember, 11.7 billion ang ato ang budget, 2.7 of which is for the gikan sa loan. So that's about 8.9, I believe, 8.9 budget. It is merely a budget, meaning, naanatay daghan nga expenses, pero asa na to kuhaon ng korta? And ang era na to is only 2 billion something, so, but pa sabot, the, the city needs to produce 6 billion, beses, ay, 6 billion pesos for the existing budget. Now, in addition to this, if, how, can, how can the government give what it does not have? Now, I would not have wanted to mention this, but sa karon na amantay delay sa mga sweldo sa LGU, and naapod ko staff na unta kuhaon niya ang heya niya hangtod ang tubag sa iya sa finance is walay kwarta and yet here we are appropriating funds for another set of expenses which I believe is also important however the question is asa kuhaon ng budget can we afford it so kana lang Madam Chair dagang okay. salamat thank you very much Councillor Amy Moreno yes Councillor Agasuan you have the floor Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I will go directly to the essence of this ordinance. If we were to pass or to institutionalize the Purok system, we are basically adding another layer of bureaucracy to an already complicated political system in Cagayan de Oro. Since there is an election of Purok leaders, it is automatically political, Madam Chair. If we make a political, uh, if we make a Purok system, it is like building a barangay within the barangay. And that is, in and of itself, a very redundant action. Madam Chair, the purpose of the Purok system is basically the function of the barangay. And that is the reason why we have the barangay system to implement such projects. As I was skimming through the ordinance, Madam Chair, I came across one section that says they will be giving out prizes to specific puroks with an incentive of 1 million, 1.5 million worth of projects. So are we now giving projects to the puroks? Madam Chair, I believe that simplicity is a foretaste of divinity. We should just simplify the way we deliver our projects, our programs. And if again we add the puroks system, we will be lost in the political maze, Madam Chair. So that is just my point. I would like to question the essence because I believe the barangay is powerful enough to deliver the functions of this said Purok system, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Agasuan. Yes, Councillor Bernice Parsha. Everybody will have the chance to talk. Thank you, Don't Madam worry. Presiding Officer. I can see you all. Sa atong tanan ng mga naminaw sa akong mga kauban, sa mga nagtanaw sa online, mayong hapon ka natong tanan. Uh, 
Kabalo na gigawa ni Madam Chair last night malang when I received the the agenda, when I read the agenda, mura kabalo ko nga mura kanigyo ng agenda nga medyo <coughs> mura dagangi komento ani. Uh, Madam Presiding Officer, when I read the name of the ordinance, an ordinance establishing and institutionalizing the PROC system, but in fairness, na may sumpay in the delivery of development programs, then I, I read the parameters, Madam Presiding Officer, kung unsa mang yun ang unod o unsay tumong aning ordinansa. In fairness, Madam Presiding Officer, sa Section 19 on the Search Parameters Criteria and Point System, uh, medyo nalipay ba kung tanaw ani because in fairness, uh, like sa gingon ni Councilor Roger Abaday, burag ang gusto na itong may tabo is to micro ba ang mga barangay in terms sa mga nagkadaiyang problema. To name a few, Madam Presiding Officer, nalipay ko aning nasa cleanliness, health, and sanitation. Kay atog yung gusto may bawaan kung usahay manggod, do naman tayo mga barangay, nga mga numbers, nga numbered barangay sa mga usahay, gamay ni sila. Pero in fairness to these big barangays also, Madam Presiding Officer, mun sa ning usahay problema kay kung natay gusto ipabuhat, naiuban mga sona or purok na sila maayo sa ingani nga mga for example kani mga segregation nay uban barangay or sona or purok gabuhat pero na sa iuban nga wala pero kasagara madamay ang entire barangay so in 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 this case guapo kay ni kay part sa parameters kay giperpurok yod and tama ang giingon ni councilor uh, Agasuan nga Gani, murang naghatag pa ta, nag, nagpahatag pa ta, uh, prices, or I think ang kwandiri is incentives to those purok na ka ng in fairness po lugar sa ilahang mga areas, eh, musunod gayod. We have here cleanliness, health and sanitation, ganaan sa guwani kay naapotay purok functionality, which is the presence of bayanihan system, which kailangan na to yud ni sa atong mga porok and even our socio-economic initiatives which ako bias ko diri sa akong unang distrito nga dagang kita yung mga hinterland barangays which kailangan taaning mga livelihood activities communal gardens and even this plant nursery and household backyard garden in fairness to this ordinance is ma-empower na to ni mga ginagmay nga mga porok na sila maningkamot o at least naman sila makadawat o uh, incentives na sila sa ilang own way na sa gamay nga grupo makabuhat sila yung nga ni. Madam Presiding Officer, kanilang ang akong isa na medyo diri lang medyo gray area. Wala mang good you define diri kaning giingon nga like on the section 9 sa qualification no person shall be eligible to run or be a candidate for any porok officer position unless if he or she is a member in good standing. Wala lang ako din nakitang definition sa unsay pasabot sa member in good standing kay sa homeowners, sa subdivision, ang kanang member in good standing is nagpuyo ka nga wala kay putol-putol, nagbayad ka sa imong monthly juice. Which is, naman ko yung uban areas din nga mangingon nga mubutar, pwede makabutar, basta kay naalang kay property. Pero naman sa iuban nga nay prop, excuse me, nay property pero wala diyan nagpuyo. Nasa iuban nagpuyo sa purok pero dili po siya ang tag-iya sa property, nagrenta ra po siya. Diyan lang ko medyo na a gray area Madam Presiding Officer in terms nga atong gistoryahan ang in kaso pag election pag butar kung kinsa ang anging butaran diyan sa mga purok leaders. Dagan salamat Madam okay, Presiding thank Officer. Thank you very much uh, Councilor uh, Bernice Parsa. Yes, Councilor Gurley Balaba, you have the floor. Two cents lang, uh, Madam Chair, no? Um, kini mong good, um, when, they, when you're in the opposition, when you, you belong to the opposition uh, group, you would say na this is uh, politically parang uh, politicized ang ordinansa. But uh, 
kung imong buot gyud na sabton no kay ang ato magudari is how to deliver efficiently and kinibang uh, effectively ang mga programa sa atong gobyerno if our chief executive ayaw na na ninyo tanawa ang kinsa ang nakalingko diha ang uh, ato diha is if our uh, local chief executive um, may anaka uh, ang iyahang gusto na pamaagi no kay lahi-lahi magud ta og uh, unsao na to pag uh, deliver sa ato ang uh, uh, mga programa in ani ang iyahang buot uh, uh, mahitabo no we should support the kining pag deliver for as long as no and uh, i think sa ato ang no legal objection no legal impediments na uh, uh, coming from the city legal office sa uh, ato ang akining naisutan ni ordinansa so i post no objection to that uh, to the said um, ordinance okay thank you very much councillor councillor attorney joey abu you have the floor <coughs> then comes majority floor leader you're next madam presiding officer thank you very much again um <coughs> i would just like to uh, uh debunk the notion that if we are in the opposition, we would always consider things political. No. As what I have, been mani I have, as what I have manifested a while ago, I post legal and factual questions, not political. <clears throat> that is precisely, Madam Presiding Officer, daghan man kaayo po kaayo ang pangutana nga naadari karun, and which should have been properly addressed before the committee level. That's why I moved a while ago, I made a subsidiary motion, that this be referred first to the committee level so that everything will be threshed out in the said forum and once everything is answered, it will be uh, then brought back here before this plenary. And also, Madam Presiding Officer, uh, in system sa purok na naman sa ato, ah, even without this, kasabot ko, maayo kayo ni. I, 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 really got, I really get the point of why this ordinance is being proposed and passed, being passed. Kasabot ko, Anike, mag-micromanage. But even until now, na naman tayo, na, ang mga matag barangay, naman ay mga purok leaders nila. So, kinilang gusto lang siya i-micromanage, but again, Madam Presiding Officers, there are factual and legal questions raised as everybody has heard a while ago, and not political Ang katulang siguro ng political nga ako na mention a while ago is katung sample katung issue sa barangay clearance na it has to be there must be a certification first by issued by the puro president before the barangay issue a barangay clearance which I would say na it could be politicized not here in the city council but in the barangay level and even in the puro level so. That is what we are trying to avoid. So, Madam Presiding Officer, as I have moved a while ago, I made a subsidiary motion as everybody has been asking or posing questions already. Nadilik nato na sa deliberately and intelligently discussed before this plenary. That's why I move that this item be referred and referred to the Committee on Barangay Affairs for further deliberation. Thank you very much, Councillor Attorney uh, Joey Abu. Yes, Majority Floor Leader, Attorney Edgar Cabanlas. You have the floor. Wako kita sa iyang kamot. Tindog lagi. Mubuon man, mubuon. No, no, no. I called first the majority. Humanama ka nasulti kayo na. Bravo. Madam Chair, Ini mga problema ng ina ni. This is part of the evolution of government. Kini yato sa 1980 before the passage of the local government code, ang barangay wala is not identified as a basic local unit. Ang munisipyo pa kini yato. Pero na exist na ang barangay. And then the passage of time na kapag nananan nato bagbago ng atong balaw sa local government, then it was given a personality na na ilang legal recognition under the law. Karong gada ko na sa nang babarangay. Nga na sini mga purok. Salamat ka ni itang hato ka nang gitagaan. Advance kita karon. Yung modern government nga. Kining sitwasyon sa purok. Mo kining sitwasyon ka niya sa mga barangay. 
kung imong tanaw ng powers and duties of the puro, wala may nakakonflict sa barangay. It's only in the assistance or assisting in the distribution of uh, basic services sa mga tao. Kaya kung magkadako na ang barangay, dagay na kay tao, unruly na kayo ang pag-deliver sa services. Wala na proper control. Usama ang bitaw, problema ka na, bisang nangis mga polis, sa ato sa, sa peace and order, nga ang number of police is dependent on the number of population. Karon tingali, 100,000 pang population, at the, rate, at, at the ratio of one policeman for every 1,000, pwede na 100. 10, 20 years ago ang kagayan di oro. Karon, daghan na kagita, so, musaka, musaka, inana na siya. So, we, we, we should be abreast with the development of uh, uh, our city. Now, ang function sa barangay was never taken over by the, by the porok. Yung tanahon dia. Wala man. Pulo sa gina, tabang mga vaccination, tabang sa mga stray, do, stray animals, distribution sa mga pagka, pag, mga assistance panahon sa sa mga kalamidad. Nothing. Nothing uh, interacts or interferes with the powers of the barangay. Salamat yung ganit kita nga naka, 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 na, 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 na kini ka ron. Gani, just to be frank, na mga panahon nga, for example, ako ikaw ang mayor, eh, supposed to be, remember nga city, ga, city mayor has the supervision over the barangay captain. But look what happened in the past. Dili lang ni sa ato sa, sa, sa kagayang doon. Mag-deliver ta sa mga calamity, calamity uh, assistance sa mga pan. Kung di masugot ang barangay captain, di ka sulit. But with this now, with this now, pwede na, kaya na may mga purok. Pwede na nga, dito na ito iagip. Hindi siya masugot ang kapitan, pastulod ka niya, at least, na na ni. So, it will work on both sides. It will work on both sides. And remember nga, doon na election ni ni every year. So, if the barang kapitan will say nga, I will control the purok, he can do that. Why? Because he can influence the election. He can campaign. Secretly or not, he can do that. But at least, the city government can have now that opportunity, that window, wherein it can deliver what it wants to deliver to the people, even if it is against the will of the barangay. So, you know, very simple. As I said, this is an evolution of governance. Kaya ito, katagog purok, balangay ka niya, kaya ito, binisya ka niya, balangay. Karoon na barangay. But it was never recognized. It was only given that face and recognition when we passed the local government code. But before that, never. Now, as we grow, as population increases, as we have more money now to, to be given to the people directly, then there is now an, another uh, pamahagi nga ato kining ma, ma mas ma, ma satisfy ang services nato sa ngatos mga tao by utilizing this poro. Karon as of now useless kulang sa incentive muna nga ginis atong ordinance na ay mga incentive so that the poro leaders nga ato unya nga modala sa mga poro matagaan sa kaikag o pamaagi kalipay nga sila makatabang they will help not only the city government, they will also help their barangays. Simple. So I object to the motion for uh, uh, referral to the... Okay, thank you very much. So there's this uh, motion... Motion to defer. No second? Wala pa. There's this objection. Uh, the, the motion objection to the from the majority. Uh, yes. Balik sa dato motion to ano to uh, to defer to defer. Oh, si in the second. In the second. Oh yes. Second. I object. Objection. Oh. Okay. So let us divide the house. Objection. So uh, for those who would like to uh, who is supporting the ordinance. Oh, deferment pa muna? No, it's already objected. Ah, the deferment is objected. Okay. For the deferment, uh, kindly uh, raise your right hand for deferment. One, two, three, four, five. 
So those who are not in favor for deferment, please raise your right hand. Twelve. Twelve for uh, against deferment and for for deferment. So let us go back to the main motion, Madam Chair. Okay, let us go for the Councillor Ayan Mark Nakaya. You're raising your hand. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. I would like to discuss the the uh, organization as a unit, Madam Presiding Officer, vested with the power and the roles that are provided by the local government code on the uh, barangays. Uh, first, it exists because uh, there is uh, the, the code that was uh, established and uh, enacted, implemented in uh, 1992. And uh, though several changes have already been made and enacted, and several uh, circulars and regulations have also been uh, uh, formed to enhance the, the development and the management of uh, communities, still remains it's the smallest local government units of in the entire archipelago. In other words, uh, it has already the role. It has already the function. I objected to the deferment because I would like to introduce uh, amendments because based on the understand my understanding on the local government code, they are independent. In fact, to a certain extent, they are autonomous. If we quarrel that authority, it it means we are bigger than Congress, but we are not. We are a subsidiary of a, the entire national government. In other words, we are only, we have the power, but an extended power of Congress. So whatever legislations that we should have, it must not be higher than the requirement provided by Congress, Madam Presiding Officer. If, for example, the local government code and the authority of uh, the Punong Barangay to grant barangay clearance for establishments, to grant barangay clearance for a person who is residing in the community, is vested exclusively to the Punong Barangay, we should not provide the ground rules. We should not provide the regulations that would superimpose the authority given to the Punong Barangay. And if we have a requisite for the Punong Barangay to issue a clearance for the city president to be given that authority, that may be perhaps contrary to law, Madam Presiding Officer. And if we clip the authority of the Punong Barangay by way of granting through an ordinance the president of the Purok to become members of the Lupong Tagapamayapa, in other words, if the barangay has 20 or more City presidents necessarily they become members by virtue of the ordinance if they follow the ordinance plus more than 20. And while I have a sense that there is a necessity, because during our time, Madam Presiding Officer, in the barangay, all the presidents of the neighborhood associations are all members of the Barangay Development Council, but not Lupong Tagapamayapa. Because it requires expertise, experience, credibility to a certain set of set of
Pakistan's leadership and trust coming from the constituency in the area where he or she is elected. So that would be another superimposing if we grant the authority, Madam Presiding Officer. And that is the only things that uh, maybe we can harmonize with the national law and be subservient to the rules and regulations. But to mainstream, which is the purpose of the executive, that we should mainstream leadership not only to the uh, intermediary level, which are the officers of the barangay, but to go down to the poro, to the situs, to the zones. That's mainstreaming, and I agree that we should do that. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Ayan Mark Nakaya. I saw you. Look at me. Councillor Attorney James Judith. You're looking at the monitor. I'm here. I'm sitting here. Then somebody will call you there. Not here. Okay. You recognize. Salamat, Madam Presiding Officer. I was looking at the monitor. Akong gitan akong... Pwede na ba kong makasulod? But I'm sitting here. Yes, thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. Um, pas, uh, salamat sa pagsabot. Inani lang, ang ako lang klarohon, kani magod ang atong sugyot ordinansa, dili na ni bago, dili pinasahi, kay nahimo na ni sa, base sa akong pagdukiduki, nahimo na ni sa uh, lungsod sa Kamotes, labi na sa ilang barangay sa San Fernando, uh, San Francisco, lalawigan sa Cebu. Gani, nag-benchmarking pa ang gitawag nato nga ang lugar sa daan, Bantayan Island, kabahin sa gihimong ordinansa, sa lungsod sa Kamotes. Inani lang, akong tataon. Ang in-English sa barangay, ang tawag ana village. Ang in-English sa Purok Hamlet or subdivision or distrito sulod sa barangay. Kung basihan nimo sa atong local government code, nagingon nga ang mga giilara ng mga local government units, ang probinsya, ang siyudad, ang munisipyo, o ang barangay. So, but pa sa but, kaya di araman taman bali ang gingon sa local government unit, a uh, local government code, pwede ang barangay na maghimo sa iyang kaugalingon ng division sulod sa iyang barangay. Kaya wala man nagbawal ang RA 7160. Kung tanawan po nga naa mismo sa maong sugyot o dinansa, nag-ingon po sa kabalaka nato sa mga urban barangay, sa labi na barangay 1 to 40, Unsa na lang mahimo nga mga gagmay sila. Nagingon ang Section 3 sa moong sugyot ordinansa nga dili muubos sa 50 ka household. Pwede nga mahimong uh, subdivision or purok or zona sa sulod sa barangay. So dili man muubos bali na may pinakaagamay nga barangay dinhi sa atong number 1 to 40 na agay pinaka average na nga duha ka purok na mahimo. Kung basihan nato ang itawag nga not less than 50 households base sa Section 3 sa art kaning sugyot ordinansa. So balikon nako. Wala nagbawal ang atong local government code kung imog yung tanawon. Kay wala na appeal ang atong gitawag nga sitio kabahin sa naabay gahom ang barangay sa labi na gitawag nga supervision. Ina nila. Kung madumduma ni Madam Presiding Officer ni Kuya Roger Abaday nga kami nakahinabi na training sa kang ang mismong amahan sa local government code ni si Senator Aquilino Tatay Pimentel kung madumduman ni Kuya Roger nagingon si Tatay Nene kay gani dito ni ako ni nakuha sa iya kung wala man galing nagbawal ang local government code pwede nimo mahimo ang tanan basta isa lang kabutang ang imong lantawon makaayo ba ni sa katawhan kung imong tanawon ang maubaling nga sugyot ordinansa gitugutan mga nita sa local government code nga maghimog mga brigada or tanod or unsa mga community nga mga organizations para unsa pang mga pundok para sa kausay ug kalinaw samot pa ka nga ato lang gilantaw sa mong sugyot ordinansa ang paghatag sa batakan nga serbisyo sa atong kabarangayan didto na gyud sa pinakailahom niini ang mga purok or zona ang ako lang matod pa ni Senator ni Tatay Nene Pimentel. Kung wala nagbawal ang local government code, kung imong tanaw sa atong lakang naghimo para sa kayuhan sa tanan, pwede nimo kini himuon sa ngalan sa gitawag nato nga GWC, the General Welfare 
Claus Kuya Roger. Dagang salamat, Madam Presiding Officer og Astang Kagayan de Oro. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Attorney James Judith. Yes, Majority Floor Leader, Attorney Edgar Cabarlas. Uh, main motion, uh, this is a mo pending main motion for the approval of this ordinance, Madam Chair. You yeah. seconded. Any objection? Yeah. Second? Second. Final manifestation. Yes, Councillor E.V. Mano, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I believe that this will no longer go to the committee level. And um, it. let me just give this final manifestation why. With all the answers that I've heard, with all the manifestations that were given, uh, something really kind of bothered me in a way that when we say uh, we will put Purok leaders, that will have direct access or we, that can be in direct contact with our local chief executive for uh, as what was brought up for garbage problems, peace and order problems, uh, dissemination of information, additional manpower, magtabang kung na ay problema sa matag barangay, makatabang ato mga lideres kada purok. You know what, Madam Chair, I understand. And actually, mayuman. But in doing or in putting these people so in these different poroks that can go directly or can they have direct access to our local chief executive, Madam Chair. Ako, Madam Chair, I have always been a firm believer of barangay empowerment. I was always taught to understand, to accept the choices of the people in different barangays. Kung kinsa ilang pilion nga punong barangay. Nya katong gi bring up nga mga you know additional tao para makatabang sa problema sa basura, peace and order to name a few among others. I think it would go down to the leadership of the punong barangay nga gipili sa katawhan sa matag barangay. Nya kung pariha sa example gaganina. Dili dawaton sa punong barangay ang mga hinabang kay Igna na to kay ganina as I, kung sayop ko og quote or sayop akong pagsabot please do correct me uh, Mr. Secretary nga dili dawaton sa barangay tungod kay dili kauban or naay mga projects sa city government baka ha or sa gobyerno sa DP dili dawaton sa kapitan so ihatag na lang nato sa barangay sa purok if I am not wrong mao akong pagsabot sa akong gamay nga kahibalo and it is just I don't want to put it out there, but I feel like it is belittling the capacity of our punong barangays. Now, they were chosen freely by the people not, you know, to lead the barangay in terms of you know, making the barangay work in all levels and in all aspects. So, ako lang, Madam Chair, no? I just want to point that out. And in addition, ako pong gikwinta. Kung maghadag 3,000 per month per puro, let's just say, annual, no, it's... 3,000 annual per porok sa kaning ato mga... It, yes, it will entail additional also nga expenses for us, which I think, pwede man sad siguro na nato nga magamit for other purposes, which would be more of a priority to the city, to the people of the city. So that's just my final manifestation, Madam Chair. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor E.B. Mano. Yes, Majority Floor Leader. Uh, there, is an, there is an objection? None. No, so, manifestation? Objection. So uh, This is an objection. So we divide the house. Uh, the yeah, let's divide the house. Those who are in favor of this ordinance may raise their right hand, please. In favor. Okay, 12. Those who are not in favor may raise their right hand. So five. Approved. Approved. Motion is carried. Move to approve on second final reading. Any second? second. Objection. The same number of objection and the same number of... The same number of objection. Only four? Five. 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 Okay. Same. Proceed. Uh, any objection? The same number. Same number. Uh, okay. Motion is here by Karit. No more. Are we done? There being no other matters to take up, ma Madam Chair. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I thought everybody wanted to speak, pa. Uh, motion. Session adjourned. <laughs>
na akong na pa-discussion. Nanahanap ako ng discussion. <laughs>